The story of the traveler and their sibling is rife with mystery and misdirection, in addition to untold unanswered questions. But I think one question that many think is shrouded in falsity is actually quite obvious. In fact, we've been directly told the answer. Paimon, Holyoverse, the Traveler, and that glorious kingdom established in the heavens are all connected much more closely than you may think. This is the unlikely Genshin Gamer, and welcome to one of my theory videos. The first one. This theory may sound far-fetched, but I think it actually explains quite a lot. And it all starts with the Genesis Crystals. Hoyoverse has done a fun and, dare I say, very clever job of making players feel immersed in this game and its lore by referring to everyone as travelers and whatnot and mentioning this world and other worlds at every turn. But I think this is not just a marketing ploy. It's the truth. In short, Hoyoverse is canon. This theory first came to me while reading the description of Genesis Crystals. Let's keep in mind that these weird crystals with the trifecta on it like Paimon and Mora is not present anywhere in the game. Only the travelers have access to them through Paimon, who supposedly bargains for you with someone. And the description reads, An energy crystal from the very origin of the universe, formed from within nothingness, out of pure potential and hope, it contains enough energy to create a newborn star. So, to say this another way, you convey to someone, Paimon, your monetary ability, potential, and desire, hope, to have some of these crystals, and they manifest for you from the origin of the universe. Hoyoverse. Each one has the power to give birth to one new star, a primogen. These stars are used to wish to the heavens that you and someone else's paths become intertwined together. Other hints to this matrix-like setup are the fact that most male that is not from a character for their birthday is from a mysterious P-A-I-M-O-N. Yet, there is still a separate real-life account, if you will, the Genshin Impact Team. And whenever something is actually wrong with the game, such as the fiasco that was the anniversary, this is where those male come from. But everything else that is not from in-game, yet is, in fact, from the game, is from this mysterious Paimon, in all caps. Paimon herself, mind you, has her own email as well, just Paimon. Paimon is meant to be your guide, which Hoyoverse literally gave you. She landed as you did, from where you are from, though a little later, but landings can be messy and she missed her mark by a bit. It has become obvious that Paimon has no idea why she feels compelled to follow you, how she knows so much about Tevat, or why she loves treasure so much. But I believe the Battle Pass trailer gives us some insight that she doesn't have. So, how does this all pertain to the Battle Pass and the plot? Let's break it down piece by piece. The parts that seem less plausible have to be informed by the parts that do match and therefore increase our understanding rather than confuse it. So we will break down this trailer starting with what easily lines up. The trailer says that once there was a glorious kingdom established amongst the heavens, and from that kingdom came a crowned heir. 
who was tasked with seeking the Genesis Pearl from the Kingdom of Darkness. But the memory of her noble origins faded, and she now believed she was the queen of the Kingdom of Darkness. These first few statements are quite loaded. Easily substantiated content first. These first few statements seem to cause many people to discount the idea of the heirs in the trailer being the twins because Lumine and Aether travel together and, well, the first heir arrived by herself. But let us ask ourselves a question. Lumine woke from her meteor and began to travel first. Do we know why this is? Some seem to think this is a fluke or that it was a fairly short amount of time later before Aether woke up, but we do know from the quest in 1.4 that Lumine woke long enough before him to peruse the continent of Tevat, get to know Dainsleaf and the people of Conria enough to sympathize with them, and later had to wake Aether anyway when disaster struck. Which tells me that their experiences on this world were indeed separate with hers being first. This is very easy to digest. The next easy statement here is that the first heir has been deceived and now thinks she is the queen of the kingdom of darkness. This right here says a lot to me. We know based on Kaya's suspicious interrogation tactics that Lumine is considered princess of the abyss. Now I say considered here because we do not know what Lumine calls herself. That may in fact be queen, and there is a difference. It leads me to believe that Lumine has ascribed more power to herself in the realm of the abyss than she is being given. A prince or princess is hardly the title of choice to a solitary ruler who has no superior. Lumine is portrayed to have the last say in the abyss, and she certainly acts the part, but is this true? The Abyss Order seemed to worship someone or something, if the preaching of the Abyss Lectors are anything to go off of. By holy proclamation, grace be upon you. Which, since they are not worshiping Lumine, logically dictates that there's someone else above her. A fledgling of a theory about the Night Mother begins to take form in my mind, but I digress. In addition to this, the deception she is said to have come across slots perfectly with another theory that I have pertaining to the different factions in Conria. In short, I do believe that the cataclysm and the unfairness associated with it that Lumine claims to be the champion for was a very nuanced event. I think the Abyss Order does not so much represent the people of Conria, but a very specific sect in the kingdom, and that that faction have led Lumine to believe a somewhat warped form of the account of that period in history. Thus, she is deceived. How did I arrive at that conclusion, you say? Well, allow me to explain extremely briefly. According to Lumine, the Abyss Order are the people of Conria, and according to Danesleaf, the Hilly Churls and Shadowy Husk Knights are too, all of which were cursed to become what they are. However, Danesleaf hates the Abyss Order, yet is sympathetic to the Hilly Churls and Knights. This automatically presents a distinction between the two in Conrian society. Then we have Piero's statement from the Pale Flame set. Since my level of learning could not compare with the sages, I failed to earn the favor of the previous ruler. So too did I fail to stop them from tearing away the veil of sin, ushering in a tide of divine wrath, destruction, and foolishness. Piero here, being confirmed as Conrian by that beautiful trailer, tells me that he straddled this middle ground along with Dainsleaf. Some of the people of Conria, the ruling or powerful faction, most likely with gold being a titular figure, 
were to blame for catalyzing the attention of the entity that destroyed them. I believe despite them being his own countrymen as well, Dainsleaf hates them for this reason. If they are who have educated Lumine on the story behind their state, I do not believe they are entirely truthful. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to that theory and I will stop it here. What this all means is that Lumine, to an extent, perhaps not as severe as Aether is, is ignorant to her true mission on this continent and her own origins. Evidence of which can be found in the fact that she calls Conria the homeland, when it has been made clear by Aether in his conversations to Paimon that he is very definitely not from this world at all. So now we ask ourselves about this Genesis Pearl the heir was supposed to find. Apparently, in the history of Tevat, there existed a special pearl. Genesis meaning world or life creating, so let's just say it is a pearl that can facilitate the creation of new worlds. And Holyoverse wants you to get it. And Conria possibly still has it. And now it's your turn to get it. This brings me to the second part of the trailer. It is said that a second heir has taken up the path where the first had stumbled. We are then told that this is our story to be told. The story yet to be written, if you will. Which brings me to my last point. Venti does not seem to know how it ends yet. It's not history. The first heir failed in what she was sent to do. So you are doing essentially the same thing, but differently. Which now leads me to a very interesting point that I think helps to really give this theory life. Paimon. We all know that Paimon is sus, right? Well, let's go over what we know about her and how this theory fits with these facts. Paimon appeared in the water near to Aether two months after he woke up. Aether fished her out of the water. It's therefore known that she can't swim. She is 100% committed to being your guide in this world. She appears to be very young, a veritable baby amongst entities. She loves both treasure and food, and no one knows what she is. Not even Zhongli. Here's what I think, in a nutshell. Because this video is getting too long, and I think it's best if I just dive in. After the Paimon notices that the new heir has severe enough amnesia that he cannot begin his mission of collecting the pearl, they send him a special guide, Paimon. And let's just add here that the interference that is messing with Hoyoverse's plan of extracting the pearl is Celestia. Why? I'm not sure yet. Paimon messed up her landing and that's why she needed a bit of saving but it worked for the better and she becomes quite attached she deems herself your guide and knows enough about the continent and its past to thoroughly educate you on it she follows you everywhere and she seems in tune with your thoughts so that she can speak for you on most occasions and considers you both to be like siblings she will always perk up at the mention of treasure no matter the amount of work and food. Now, as for food, I think Paimon really just likes food. But as for treasure, is Paimon programmed to adore and insist that you track down every mention of treasure to assist you in finding that pearl? It strikes me that it would definitely be considered treasure. Food for thought, I think. Paimon is the representation of your gateway to wishing for more companions to accompany you on your adventure, your ticket to manipulating time to a short degree, and always forward, never backwards, and cooperating with other travelers from time to time, all to help you find this pearl. And she is the mascot of Holyoverse, or at least of Genshin. I have so much more to say about the false sky, 
Dainsleaf's miscellany videos and the factions of Conria, but those will have to wait until another time. I know this theory is a little out there, but you can't deny that there are many solid correlations. Let me know what you think, and I'll hopefully see you in another video. Please like and subscribe if you liked what you saw and would like to subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed.